What's up, Legendary Vision? Got a very special episode today. Got the Legendary Lee with me. Yes, sir. My y'all on game. He serial entrepreneur at the Love Jackson State University. I'm gonna let you get your own intro because I know you is very deep into it. I don't wanna mess none of it up. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Lee. Y'all can call me Leo uh, or just Leo. I am a Leo. So I own uh, primarily one company. It's called Her Web. Um, it is a apparel and design company. We do video. I do video, uh, video editing, uh, photography, uh, apparel. Um, the central theme behind her web is it's based on the zodiac. Uh, I wanted to create a clothing line that represented the wearer, rather than so rather than you wearing the variant across your chest. I want every piece to have something to say about the wearer. Uh, so with this one right here, this is one of our new lines, um, and it's just something. I, uh, design we just literally just came up with over the last couple days um, uh, but anyway just you know you got the nice uh, cloud backdrop it, every sign every sign is tied to an element um, so you got earth air fire and water uh, so Libra being an air sign I threw a little clouds in the background uh, we also I also do custom wraps or uh, vinyl decals for uh, little little side pieces like mugs or bottles or whatever um but yeah that's so also i'm a resident of jackson mississippi i grew up here i actually grew up out at brandon my parents taught at jackson um in the jps system my mom was a principal at point Dex, and my dad was a coach out at wingfield for a little bit um and like i said i grew up out here so um just a little bit backstory on me before i got here right out of high school i went and joined the air force while I was in the Air Force, I was a security force specialist. Um, I did a little side training, some on, on the IT side, uh, but what I really was interested in was graphic design and video editing. Um, so I worked in the sign shop for a little while. That's how I learned how to do, like, uh, work with programs like Illustrator and Photoshop. And, uh, and at the time it was Flash and all the Flash animator and all that kind of stuff. So I got into that real heavy, uh, spent hours a day on that. And then I had this dream where I wanted to create my own like multimedia company. Uh, so we would do like apparel uh, and film productions, uh, videography, so like music videos, uh, photography, everything. And I wanted to be able to uh, give us a space where we could tell our own stories and something you know new and exciting so we can kind of look to the future. So for sure, that's a little bit about me. So how did you like decide you just really want to get in like the videography and taking photos? actually starting up your own brand so start my own brand uh i wouldn't see when i would go shopping for clothes i typically wouldn't see anything that i really like or i really wanted yeah. i would just choose what was available on the racks um and i'm kind of i'm real picky about what i wear um and so i wasn't buying a lot of clothes i was unsatisfied with what i was seeing so i decided well let me try to make my own my own stuff. So last year when everything hit, actually let me back up a little bit. So one of the things we did last year was uh, we did uh, Fashion Week and it was Jackson State's very first Fashion Week last year. So that was like a five month program. Uh, and it actually the year anniversary was February 27th. So we just literally hit the anniversary for uh, JSU's uh, first Fashion Week. Uh, in that time, I developed a clothing line that would go along with what we were doing uh, that would kind of going to the theme of uh of the first fashion week so we had five days each day had a different thing so i was designing and organizing and, and really directing that whole program along with shamari um but anyway so started a clothing line because i was unsatisfied with what i was seeing on the racks i wanted something that represented me and something that i was comfortable with so i started doing small designs uh i found i had one model at the very beginning uh, it, I did one shirt for a young lady named Jessica Coleman. She actually has her own company called Magic Creations. But anyway, I um, designed a shirt for her. We shot a little video. Um, and from there, I got a really good response. So I continued to develop and learn uh, what materials I needed, uh, what actually looks good on clothes, uh, how to put the whole thing together. Uh, and then last year, after everything went down with, uh, with the virus and everything, everybody was kind of locked in. We were all kind of locked in. So I used that time 
to uh, invest of their money that we were getting kind of in the system or whatever. I took that money, invested in a sewing machine, uh, a heat press, the screen print uh, materials and the inks and everything like that. And I spent months just in my art room, in my house, um, learning how to make all my own stuff. Um, and I, all what is going on, obviously I'm posting and I'm dropping different things. And when I had the opportunity to connect, connect with people and um, doing the videos. Now, how I got into doing the videos and everything like that, I had an interest, remember, like I said before, in the beginning, uh, when I was in the Air Force, I was learning how to do like video editing and green screen and yeah. graphics and all that. So uh, that's what like the foundation of my knowledge, but it took me like years to come back to it. Starting my clothing brand is what pulled me back. Uh, one, I'm learning how to, I'm designing everything uh, from scratch. Uh, and then, of course, I need photos. So then, I, you know, I had to learn how to take pictures. Got a cheap camera. Uh, started practicing with the camera uh, with just the pictures at first to figure out, like, you know, the best angles and all that kind of stuff. Like, what does it take to make? What could be attractive or what, for the consumer? Uh, what are they looking for? And so on one side, you know, it's more artistic. But on the other side, I'm trying to figure out, you know, the whole marketing game. Um, so I started that. And then, you know, I started having ideas So you know, uh, everybody's doing pictures. It's Instagram or Facebook. You're always seeing a picture or whatever for clothes. You kind of just see somebody post or whatever. So I thought, okay, well, let's try videos. So yeah. I had a friend, uh, like I said, the first model I had was with Jessica. We did one out here on Swinging Bridge in Byron. The next videos I did was out in Atlanta. Um, I had a friend named Lindsay, uh, sorry, Lindsay May. So, uh, Went out there with her. We shot a uh, crew, Craig. It's the tunnel. It's like a tunnel and it's full of gra full of graffiti. Uh, if you go back, I think it's around September, between September and November. We we shot. Oh, I'm sorry, last summer, uh, we shot out there and I dropped those and that was the start of the 360 line. So, uh, got my little chops in, uh, shooting and editing out there, and then uh, from there. I think I started working with uh, Tay because we had I had already worked with her with the Fashion Week, so she started pulling yeah. me in, and I started doing her videos. And I think the first the first video I actually did that was separate from my own projects was with Tay, and I did the um, They Don't Care About Us. So she did like her own version. This is right after the George Floyd incident, yeah. and uh, so we did a video called uh, They Don't Care About Us, where we're downtown at the Capitol building. It was I think it was like a couple of days, the same week of the uh, not but the, the marches that we had down there, downtown. Um, so right before that, we went out with a couple people and shot that video, and then we kind of just have been going from there. Yeah. You just really dropped a whole lot of guys. I got to go ahead and break it down. <laughs> fans right now. Let me just okay. go and look at investing yourself. I know a lot of people scared to invest in themselves. Okay. I know most people, they got that 1200 from the stem and saying, I'm about to go eat these J's. Right. I'm about to go me a fit. I'm about right. to get clean with everything. Yeah, I'm about right. to get ready to go out. Right. But you said you want to invest all that back into yourself. Yeah. So was that hard for you to just go and invest it back into yourself? No, not at all. I that's I don't, okay, so growing up, I didn't have J's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My dad was a basketball coach. So when we did get shoes, it was whatever the basketball team was wearing. Yeah. And then on the side of that would be, you know, whatever he felt like buying. So I never grew up with like J's or like any of like the stuff that was like uh, considered to be popular or whatever. So when I grew up, like at, as an adult, that wasn't a first priority for me. You know, um, most of my time as a child went into um, creativity, reading, art, you know, that kind of stuff. So growing up, like when my when when everything hit and we got that stimulus check, the first thing I thought was. What equipment can I buy? Yeah. Because I already, I'm already like, hey, I dove in head first. I'm already into this 100. percent So what do I need to make this grow? Because this is what I can see myself doing. I can, I literally can do this 24 hours a day. You know, I wake up thinking about, you know, this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The videos, the clothes, all of that. That's that's this is me. So no, it wasn't a hard decision at all. Like that for me was like a first priority, like paying bills and buying, you know, equipment to to uh, uh, make whatever I need to make. So I know you said you got a lot of stuff, so how much time did it take you just to really get used to being an artist and using an artist and <laughs> what was, you know, that, you know, learning curve and learning how to do all this? Because you said you got some, you got some things, man. Uh, okay, so to be honest with you, it's been like literally 10 years. Just over 10 years, the first nine years was me just on and off. I had the idea in the back of my mind and I would practice every now and then. 
But if we're just talking about last year, I really got started, seriously got started, what was it, March, April. I think when the checks first hit around April or May, somewhere in that time. Literally from that time until December. So January, February, March, April, we're gonna say eight months. I, for the last eight months, not 2020, so just in, no, I'm sorry, not 2021, so do you count just 2020? Yeah. Eight months of just every day, 24 seven, wake up, go to sleep, thinking how to improve on designs yeah. and learning. That, that, was, that was eight months of solid work. And it's still been going, like it hasn't stopped, but if we're just talking about the last year, like it's been since then and I've been on it every day. So you sewed this up together and you know, did, um, did you print press? Yeah. You print on yourself? Everything. So this right here, the final designs will be a screen print and that's a little bit different from what you have here. This right here is vinyl uh, and it's an adhesive vinyl. So what you, I, I've all got a Cricut machine. <laughs> so you take the Cricut, um, get the little adhesive vinyl or whatever, find a good brand. Um, and once you have your design, you can select what you want to keep and what you want to remove from the design. It cuts it out for you. You weed it out. Um, you, you know, obviously turn on your heat press, uh, set it at the right temperature, press that for a couple seconds, and boom, that's what you got here. Uh, another way you can do this is, is what's called um, screen printing, which that's where you're pressing the ink into the fabric. Um, and that's a little bit more, not a complicated process, but a little bit, it requires a few more steps than this right here. But if you want a quick shirt that you can just kind of knock out, um, fairly inexpensive uh, and literally no mess, almost no mess, except for like cleaning up the spare vinyl or whatever, this is the way you would go. And either, both sides look really well. And this, what the benefit to this right here is the vinyl won't fade. Um, and if it's good vinyl, it'll stick around for a really long time. Uh, the plus side to screen printing is it's pressed into the shirt. So like that right there, that's a screen print. You see what I'm saying? Depending on the brand of the ink and the quality of the ink and the clothes and everything like that, you make it a little bit of fading. Now, of course, that looks good over time. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. you want your clothes look a little distressed or faded because, you know, that's a whole look. But if you want the color to be bright and crisp throughout the duration of its life, you want to go with vinyl, and that's what that is here. And also with this right here. So this right here is a um, adhesive vinyl. Use the same process. Uh, you get a vinyl that's sticky like a sticker. Yeah. Cut, uh, put it in the Cricut, uh, get your design or whatever, tape it down, and boom, that's it. And then if you want, you can add a lacquer on top of it so that it can't, so when you wash it, yeah. you don't have to worry about, you know, whatever. Yeah. So how, how did you like go about like getting different types of fabrics, seeing what's the best t-shirt, what's the best, you know, just everything that went into that process. So I wanted um, something that felt good no matter how long you wore it. I've noticed with some t-shirts, the so these right here, these are kind of a, it's 100% cotton, and it's a but it, and it's a ring spun cotton, and it's a lot softer. Some of the t-shirts you get will be rough right out the box, and it may soften up a little bit after a wash, uh, but for the most part, they're kind of rough on the skin. I wanted yeah. something that felt good and that fit real nice. Um, my Friday, really my first introduction was last year when we do when we, well, we were 2019 pre prepping for Fashion Week. Uh, Samari introduced me to the Hanes, some of their Hanes t-shirts. Some of the, uh, the higher line t-shirts are fitted. It's almost like yeah. custom made stuff. You know what I'm saying? It fits real well to the body. If you're not in great shape, it'll make you look like you're in shape because you know it fits to your arms and you know what I'm saying, everything like that. So I was thinking, okay, that's what I want for my clothes. I want it to fit really well, I want it to be nice. Um, so that's that's the direction I go in. I just, I like softness and a good fit. Uh, so I did research, you know, um, different fabrics, uh, and then what's the reaction to uh, when they wash, how, you know, how, how long does the color, um, will it fade over time? And then what's, the, what's it gonna look like when it does fade? Like if you get a black, is it gonna be gray? eventually or will it be relatively still black you know what i'm saying so that's what i'm looking for really okay so what made you just want to go like different zodiac signs and like bring all them in together so with her web further to explain and let me break down what her web is her web is it's a it's kind of it's not an analogy it's another way of saying the zodiac so it's Basically, what I've given reference to or reverence to is uh, what some would call like the Holy Trinity. 
um, in some of the Holy Trinity, uh, in, in some cultures, the Holy Trinity, you have the uh, mother, father, and the child. And that dates back to some of our, our original thoughts and understanding of what, uh, how nature works and everything like that. Uh, you have a feminine, masculine, and the unity of those is the, the child. Her will refers to um, the physical world or matter and the connections between people, the stars, planets, moons, elements, that whole thing. Um, and also, if you look in the sky, if you connected all the stars by with, with a line, it would look like a giant web. Um, so that's what her web is. Also, everybody has a birthday. Yeah. Everybody was born within 12 months, within a 12-hour frame or 24-hour frame, 365 days out of the year. Um, so this allowed me the opportunity to give some kind of representation to the wearer. I wanted to give you something that represented you rather than you wearing a brand. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So, and of course it is her web, but, and, and I can make, you know, I'm, I do have shirts where it's her web, you get the 360 on there, but the ones I'm most proud of are the ones where it shows, it, it may just say, it may just be, you know, a picture. Uh, with maybe elements or animals or but in in the case of these you know you add in your birth sign you know what i'm saying and it's just a little a little bit of representation for the person that's wearing the clothes for sure because um about this like in february it was black history month so i went like extra hard just to the black millionaire the black billionaire mm -hmm. so three of the people i really looked into was like you know puppy mm -hmm. i looked in jay-z and looked in damian jones mm -hmm. some observer had coming up out in the pearl business Right. So as I was going through them, looking at different stuff, how they brought all this stuff, how they had Sean Jay and Rockaway, Fubu. Mm -hmm. So I was going through, watching how they were doing, watching how they started off, how they was hustling, right. how they was out here just really. I know um, Damien Judd said he was just going from place to place, just trying to sell t-shirts. Right. And then just going out like that, and then he just talked about how he got in the market, how it was getting sales, right. how he branded himself, how he got inside the stores. Right. So how are you like pivoting, trying to get inside the stores, or maybe marketing more, or just how are you doing your social media? So, like I said, this last year has been more so creativity, uh, figuring out how to make the clothes. So this year I'm gonna dedicate really more to the marketing um, and figuring out, we're not even figuring out, working on uh, different programs or uh, developing different methods of getting to the consumer, to the buyer, and letting them see what we're doing. Um, so what that's gonna be on the social media side is I'm being much more active on the social media side. Last year you would see something from me like maybe once a month or once every you know once every couple of days, and that's not really effective if that's what I want to do. Uh, if I want people to you know see me or know who I am, um, so being more active on social media, um, being more active in the community. Uh, just getting involved with different events that's going on in the community and represent, you know, obviously wearing the stuff there and, 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 and uh, making connections with, with uh, what's going on in the community. Uh, but then also things like um, these pop-up shops that we have or when it comes back, the first fondry, you know, I think it was like the first Friday or the Thursday of every, every month, yeah. fondry or whatever, you set up your booth or whatever, you can pay your fee, you can set up your booth and sell your apparel there. So what I'm going to be looking for to uh, for this year and, and moving forward is looking for more opportunities to expose the people to what I'm doing or expose myself to the people. Um, and then also uh, learning a little bit more about how to manage a business. Because uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a creator, I'm an artist. Yeah. So that's been my sole focus, you know, uh, but I recognize that I can create 24 seven, but if I'm not promoting myself properly, then I'm just making stuff. And it's mostly yeah. just for me to wear, you know? Uh, so that's that's really what I'm gonna focus on more. So like I said, uh, more social media engagement, more physical engagement, um, having products and samples on hand so that no matter where I am or who I meet, I'll be able to offer them something, you know? Uh, I talked to, um, what's his name, Trey, who owns Country Bumpkin. Yeah, no, uh, right. yeah, so Detroit's real cool. He's free with yeah. his knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we talked, actually, we talked on Clubhouse. I met him in his store, and we talked a couple of times. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with him on a couple of things. Uh, but um, we were on Clubhouse, and he said that one of the strategies that he had is he would he would walk around campus. He had one design, and he would take around campus. And sometimes he would just give away free shirts sure. just so that people could 
when they so that they can see it. And the thing is, the idea is on that end is before you make your money, connecting with the people who you want to be your buyers. So that was one of the ways he did. And I know also when he was here, he was hosting parties and DJing and stuff like that. So he already kind of had a following based on that. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's another thing is uh, develop a following by being a little bit more consistent uh, yeah. with reaching out to the consumer. I know Tommy did something similar to that. So Tommy, I don't know if you know him, he's inside the entrepreneurs this year. Mm -hmm. So Tommy is called Jug at Apparel. Mm -hmm. So he got like shirts and hoodies and stuff. So him and his a lot of people from Chicago. So a lot of his friends from Chicago down here, go down here also. Mm -hmm. So what he did, him and his friends wear his shirts. He gave to like certain key athletes and certain greats and he got everybody wearing them. Mm -hmm. And then as you see them around camps, oh, this is my shirt, this, you know, I like that hoodie. Right. I like this sweatsuit. Right. So as you get you get your brand out there, it's free marketing for you. Right, right. It's like a walking billboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a walking billboard yeah. for it. Yeah. So the next question I was going to ask you, I know you said you was in the military. So how do you feel like that shaped you up in the second you are now? It it was key. Like yeah. that was fundamental. Um There, there's so much to say about when I was in the military. One, the people I met, uh, all the different personalities really contributed to who I am now. Um, and the different experiences, the training I had, the places I, well, yeah, the places I got to go uh, and see and visit, that was, that helped a lot. And the different, one thing being here in Jackson, growing up here in Jackson, like now it's becoming more diverse. But when I was really young, it seemed like you really only saw just yeah. us. It was either, you know, black or white. Now we've got, a little bit of everything here yeah. and depending on where you go in the city you may see more of one or the other or where you travel outside of the city you may see more of one or the other but um growing up that wasn't didn't seem like there was a lot of diversity going into the military gave me an opportunity to really not study but experience other people's culture just by meeting those people and having conversations with them and realizing that we're, we're not all exactly the same but we are very similar you know what I'm saying? There's key differences that make us, that different, differentiate us, but it all, those differences also is what I think unites us. Um, and so that, I know that sparked a lot of, um, just, you know, uh, making friends with those people, those lasting relationships, that helps with the creativity because that gives me like a deeper reservoir to pull from uh, when it comes to uh, anything, or whether it's visual, with the visual arts, or it's, you know, apparel, or whatever it is, with the uh, videography, and, um, the last thing I would want to do is, okay, let me explain something. So this would be like one of the basic designs, right? Okay. Um, but if you look in here, if you're familiar with like anime or like a any kind of Asian culture, if you look at the clouds in the design, you can see that what I pulled from was some Japanese and Chinese, uh, like some of their more ancient art, which how they depicted the clouds. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Also in those cultures, you get um, uh, references to the elements. You see what I'm saying? So that helped, that informed this design right here. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and then also another element is this right here is the even just the font. Um, this was also informed by like the 60s and 70s movement. You know what I'm saying? When people were making, and it's similar to what's going on now with the styles and the aesthetic or whatever. It's slightly different, but um, People want to be more in tune with nature or whatever, but even with the fun, like the 70s or 60s style, the like big bubble writing with the, you know what I'm saying? So um, being, being in the military <sighs> helped because it wasn't just me watching it on TV. You see what I'm saying? I got to see it in real life. You see what I'm saying? So. Uh, when I use it or when, I, when, I'm, it, when I'm in my creative mode, I've got all these different, like a library uh, of resources to pull from. Okay. Yeah. So my next question would be, because I feel I'm very creative too, but I know sometimes I get to think about a million different things. So right. I just like, focus up on one thing. I mean, maybe, oh, let me go do this. Is a, oh, no, I got this idea about this. Is a, I don't right. want to forget this, so let me go and write it down right, right. now. So how do you right. like, stay focused? <laughs> I know it'd be a struggle for me. Man, I mean, that's that is the struggle. Like being a creator is just like because you're con I'm constantly thinking or we're constantly thinking of something new and everything is exciting. Like no idea really gets boring. It just may get replaced by something else. Um 
a lot of times what'll happen is is either out of necessity or a lot of times not a necessity, not like it's a desperate move, but more like I've got an idea that I want to do. Um, I got a photo shoot that I may want to do. Or I got a video that I may want to do. So let me create something that ties all that in together. Um, and that helps to kind of narrow it down. Because like you said, I'll have a thousand ideas in one day. Yeah. You know, uh, but if I decide I want to do this and I know I definitely want to do this one thing. So then I think, okay, what kind of look am I going for? So I hit up Pinterest and I get to swipe it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram. If you go to get there, parts of Instagram that you can go to where it's artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can see their work and it helps to inform like what I want to do. And I start thinking, okay, um, well, let me just try something real quick. So I may either sketch something down real quick or like you said, write a couple ideas. And then usually it starts with like one thing. So like with this one, it was the font. Um, and then I went from the front and I was like, okay, well that's more 60s, 70s. What in that era was big? Like what was going on in that time? Uh, so let me find, a, you know, build an aesthetic around this one central thing. And then I can start to kind of, the idea begins to congeal. Um, and I can build and, 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 and get a solid idea about what it is I want to do. Uh, so really I would say, find a one, find, and, and again, it's, I, to explain it, I don't know if that's even a good explanation. Finding a thing that you want to do and stay focused on that one thing. You know what I'm saying? Like dive head first. If you want to make a video, uh, you're doing these right here. Yeah. Right? So this, I would say for you, this is your, this is a, uh, a way for you to be creative and connect with people. Um, what do you want the aesthetic to be? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, what do you want, when people watch this, what do you want them to see? And then how do you want them to feel? Because when they're watching this, if you notice when we're watching things, we're in that world. All of this ceases to exist for us. So the, the, the atmosphere you create here is what they're experiencing vicariously through that phone yeah. or, or whatever screen that they're using or whatever medium that they're using. So think on that. Think of an idea like, what do I want them to feel? How do I feel when I'm in here? How does this make me feel? You know what I'm saying? What do I want to give the person who's engaged in this? Um, and then research that feeling. So if it's like, I want, it to, I, want, I want it to be more street, or I want it to be more business, I want it to be like, I want you to feel like you're on a new set or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know what your idea may be. But if that's the idea you have, focus on that and then begin to add elements to it one piece at a time. It may just start with one thing. It may be just a word or a color. You know what I'm saying? One thing I will say, as a creator, and that's key for you, and this is with marketing and everything, learn color theory. Yeah. And that's not just what colors go together, it's what colors do to the viewer. You know what I'm saying? What black says to a buyer, will you pay more for black or white? Will you pay less for orange or pink or yellow? You see what I'm saying? Okay. What does that do for the consumer? Um, and what that'll help inform is when you're doing something here, you can start to build an idea about what you want your room to look like. Or, you know what I'm saying? What do I want to wear? You see what I'm saying? If you watch, what you're doing now is similar to GGTV. I don't know if you've ever seen Snoop Dogg's thing. Like Snoop Dogg has his thing is just like this right here. He yeah. brings people in, it's like different artists and whatever. He'll bring them in and sit down and just talk to them. And, but when you watch his show, what's in front of him, you see what I'm saying? Like you're looking at what's on the table in front of him. And then in the background, he's got something going on. You know what I'm saying? Same thing when you watch the news. There's yeah. a feeling. You know when you see a certain type of scene, you know it's a news scene. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would say as an artist, decide what you want the, the watcher, listener, viewer, whatever. We, excuse me the reader to to um, feel or experience and then build on that. That's a good way to help focus. All right. So picking this up last segment of the show, I call this our Fatal Four. Okay. Yeah, so it's just like, we quick four answers. I'm gonna ask you four questions, just okay. answer real quick. So the first question I would like to ask is, if you went outside today and somebody cut you a million dollar check, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> a million dollar check. Uh, all right. First priority. Um, we were talking about real estate. Yeah. 
I'm paying off my house. Yeah. I want that land. You know what I'm saying? I want to have it. So that's mine. That's the first thing. Get the house paid off. Uh, because, you know, that's that's going to be my core. Like, that's yeah. where I'm branching everything out from. So get the house paid off. Uh, the second thing is I'm putting up at least half of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And whether that's going into investments, I recently got into investing. So I would say a quarter is going into an investment portfolio or helping to build my investment portfolio into some into some companies that I know I can see long-term growth in. Uh, and whatever um, sector that is. Um, so invest, save, pay off the house, and then that last chunk is gonna go into the business. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And that's gonna be, that's so we say a million, 250 goes in investment, 250 goes in the savings. The house ain't but a couple, like 20. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. 20. So that leaves me with still like half a million, basically. Yeah. Uh, so that's going into what I've got going coming up soon, which is um, we're working on a film uh, with Ruby. Uh, her name is Ruby Pollock. I think she has a YouTube channel called uh, Ray Ann. Uh, and her Instagram is Ruby Red, but she's one of the writers on the film I have coming up, or a docu. Uh, it's a film. It's a series uh, called Who Am I? And we're. Um, it's about a young lady, a, a young lady, uh, two friends. It's their spiritual kind of awakening, uh, and just their experiences in life. Uh, so I'm gonna put some investment into that, reinvest it into the clothes. Uh, I'm not gonna spend all the money just like I need to buy these commercials and stuff like yeah. that. But I am gonna, you know. Uh, step up uh, the quality of my product and um, I don't know put put that towards building the future with this company for sure yeah next question would be if you can go network with any one person that ever walked the earth or that's here now who would you go network with who who would I network with let me think on that so I think who 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 I feel like would be the most connected yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's the, the one I'm looking is. for. Uh, I think we tend to like, it's always like celebrities. We always think celebrities first, but I'm thinking, I don't know that I have a name, uh, but the person I would look for, it would be like whoever is the marketing director for Disney. Yeah. Who does their marketing? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why I say this. Disney owns the world. Yeah. Disney is everywhere. They are. In sp if you ever look up Disney's profile on Google, they yeah. have satellites. They have obviously media companies. They're tapped in with every major media company on the planet. Yeah. And they're all over the world. Disney is literally like its own its own nation. They yeah. almost have a military force yeah. on the media side onto themselves. Um, so those are the people. I, if, if it's not one person. Those are the people I would want to tap in with, yeah. or whoever I guess the president is of Disney. Yeah. Uh, just because I feel like partnering with that company, like the the opportunities are limitless. Yeah. End of the day, they can get me in the door everywhere, um, and that's from fin all over. So yeah, that's I don't know the name, yeah. but that's the person or those are the people I want to talk to uh, if I can connect. You know, if I can connect with somebody. Okay. 